Good afternoon from teacher Melissa and I just wanted to come to you today to answer some questions that came about from a recent video of mine. I was showing what I do when I hit, click the start class button early. Don't start class, but I click the button. And one of the things I talked about was, is I'm keeping an eye on my ping if I need to do something about it. And so I thought I would follow up because I had quite a few questions. Well, what is ping? What should it be at? What does it do? So I just want to address that briefly today. Ping in your online VIP kid classroom. So first of all, this is very non-technical. This is extremely basic. So if you are a tech gal or you are a tech guy, you might as well click stop right now because you are not going to like the way I explain it. I'm going to say something that's going to annoy you because it's too simple. That's not really the way it works. So fine, that's okay. You tech people can go off and talk. I'm talking to folks out there like me who are just confused and want a basic, simple answer and what to do to fix it. And this is what I'm going to tell you today. Very basic explanation of what ping is. So please feel free to ignore this video completely if you know better than I do. Just ignore it. Leave this conversation for those of us who are a little tech challenged and just need a very simple explanation. Okay, first of all, I'm going to tell you what ping is not. You cannot go on speedtest.net or anything like that, really, and check your ping. It's not the upload speed of your computer. It's not the download speed. It's none of those. What it is, is your computer where you're sitting talking to the student's computer. And so you need, you can't really check it very well unless you're already connected to the student. Now, if you know a computer in China or a server in China and you want to try to check the ping that way and you know how to do that, hey, go right ahead. I'm just going to talk to you about what to do when you're in the classroom. So ping is basically like this with your student. It's a ping pong game back and forth between your computer and your student's computer. So here you are talking and here's your student's computer. You're going to say something and hit the ping pong ball to them. Their turn, they're going to say something and hit the ping pong ball back to you. Now, obviously, the faster the ping pong ball goes back and forth, the speed of the ping pong ball going back and forth, the faster it is, the easier you're going to be able to communicate. There's very little lag time. You're not going to hear the echo so much. That's one reason why, only one reason, but one reason why you might hear an echo. So you want the ping speed, you want the ball to go back and forth pretty fast. Now, the ping number isn't how fast it's going, okay? The ping number isn't counting the speed of the ball. The ping is checking how quickly the ball gets back to you and it's measuring that lag time. So think of it like ping pong and golf. The lower the number, the better player you are. So you want a low number on your ping because that's the least amount of lag time. So it's not measuring the speed, it's measuring the lag time. So if it takes a long time for the ping pong ball on your computer to get to the ping pong ball on their computer, and then they answer you and they hit the ping pong ball back, that number's high because it's measuring the time, not the speed. You want a low number because you want the least amount of time to get back and forth. Does that make sense? We're not measuring speed. 120 miles an hour is not what we're looking for. We're looking for only 28 seconds for it to get back and forth. I know it's not an hour. I know it's not seconds. I'm just explaining it <laughs> in a non-technical way. So the lower your ping number, the faster it goes back and forth, the less time. So I want you to think of that ping number as a unit of time, whatever unit you want to imagine it. The lower the number, the better, because that's the least amount of time. 
Now, in VIP Kid World, you're looking for under 100. Now, I've taught with it slightly over 100. I've taught with it spiking up to 120, but it's going to be difficult to start a class if your numbers are that high. If your numbers are much higher than 100 all the time, you, you're going to have a little bit of trouble, and you've got a much greater chance of IT, uh, teacher IT issues. So keep that in mind. You want to get it under 100, okay? Now, I'm going to show you with some screenshots of where that, where to find that number in the app. So I'm going to show you two because the first one, my ping was higher than I wanted. So if you look at this one, I've circled, it kind of looks like your, sort of like your Wi-Fi bars on your phone, like if you've got your Wi-Fi turned on or on your computer, it looks a little bit like that. So if it's getting in the orange, it's like, ooh, danger zone, danger zone. Think of it as a yellow alert on Star Trek. Okay, we're not in red alert status yet. We're in yellow alert. So if it starts getting orange, we're kind of in yellow alert. All right. So if it gets up into the red, then we're on red alert. You are going to have trouble here. So keep an eye on that. This is one reason I clicked that start class early button, button early. Because if the student is there, you know, they've logged on. It doesn't really work if the student's not there. Why doesn't it work if the student hasn't logged on? Because you're checking the ping pong ball going back and forth from your computer to their computer. So I, I need to see the student there, and then I can quickly check my ping to see how quickly the ball is going back and forth. So once they're there, and you can see I checked, and it, it's orange here, and I, I didn't like that. Here's one thing you can do quickly. Just click refresh the class. Now sometimes if you just wait a few seconds, it'll just drop back down because it's grabbing the student's computer's address. And then hooking it up with yours, and so there would be a little bit of a delay as it's doing making that connection. Just wait a couple seconds, a few seconds, and see. If it doesn't, click refresh on the classroom. Your timer's still counting down. Even if you've already started class and you're noticing some issues, and it's, it jumps up and stays there for a little bit, just say, oh, wait a moment. I will refresh. Wait a moment, please. And then click refresh and see if that pain goes back down. So that's one thing you can do. Now, I have noticed that sometimes I need to actually switch lines. So if I click that and it, I might have two or three, we used to have a ton, but now there might be, it might say line four, five, and six, or it might say two, three, four, or it might say five, six, eight. I, I have no idea why certain numbers come up. I have no idea why, but um, sometimes I'll check a different line and it'll be great on a different line. There's not as many people playing ping pong on that line, I guess. I don't know. I want to play ping pong just me and the student. So I'm going to try to find a line that works. I'm looking for, when I'm switching lines, I'm looking for a good, fast ping pong table. So switch lines and see. Now, if you're under 100, don't do any of this. You're, you're good. Don't worry. Oh, my gosh, it's, it's 75. I teach at 75, 78. Uh, lots of times. Sometimes I get down like in the 20s. I've heard people like, hey, my ping is six. I'm like, yowzer. Just keep it under 100 is really what you're looking for, okay? So you can switch lines. Now, my number one recommendation for keeping your ping low is use an Ethernet cord and hard plug your computer into your router so that you're, you've got a really strong ping pong table there connection. You don't have to worry about the wind blowing your ping pong ball away because you're going through the air to play and, and the table's got holes in it and stuff. Just hardwire in to an ethernet if you can at all do that. If that means you get a 50 foot ethernet cord and you run it up the basement stairs and into the router and then you unplug it every day, if that's what it takes, hey, it's a great gig. It's worth, the, it's worth the Ethernet cord. If that means you hubby drills a little bee hole in the wall and you drop it down, whatever. If you can do it, do it. Now, I know lots of you have great success. You have fabulous wireless and you have great success. I'm not talking to the people who have no problems. This is a tip video, which means it's for people who are having problems with their ping. So try that. Another thing to do is to clear your cache before every class on the app if you are trouble prone. 
to having lag time between you and your students. I've circled it here. It's that little arrow up there. Just click clear cache, clear, clear cache. You certainly want to do that at the beginning of every day when you first log into the app. But if you are someone who has trouble for whatever reason, clear that cache out. You don't want garbage laying all over your ping pong table and somebody's burger wrapper. Clear it out. Think of it as trash. Clear that out of there and give yourself a nice clean playing surface for your ping game with your student. Remember, it's not measuring speed, so high is not a good number. It is measuring lag time. It's measuring how long it takes to get back and forth. So the lower the number, the better, because it only takes a little bit of time to get back and forth between your computers. Okay, I hope this helps understand a little bit more about what ping is. Have a great day.